I'm going to share with you exactly how I increased my SAT score from a 1290 to a 1590, which is one point away from a perfect score. The strategies and tactics I'm about to share with you have helped me significantly punch above my weight when it comes to problem solving. And they've helped me do things like create an AI game player that was competitive with some of the best in the world at the time. They've also helped me single-handedly build a blockchain-based social network, which many other teams were trying to do at the time with vast amounts of funding. I was able to do it by myself with almost no funding, just a couple credit cards. <laughs> That's another story though. And guys, I'm a pretty normal dude when it comes to mental faculties. I'm not gonna go into Google interview and like ace all these problem solving. It's just, that's not me. If you actually implement these common sense strategies strategies and tactics, you're going to increase your problem solving ability. I'll talk about exactly who can benefit most uh, towards the end of the video. Okay, guys. So when I was growing up, I tried almost everything I could to get smarter. I never really felt very engaged. I think it was really frustrating and actually embarrassing as well to show up to school and barely be able to focus or answer questions in class. I tried everything. I tried extreme sports. I tried waking up early. I tried supplements. I even tried pharmaceuticals. I tried changing my diet. You know, I've been everything from a vegan to a carnivore and everything in between. So I've really done everything that I thought of, including these mental games, by the way, like n back tests, which I'm not really going to get into in this video. Suffice it to say, it didn't work. I've tried a lot of things and I'm going to share the most effective strategies I've used to unlock more of my potential. And the first idea here is improve the vessel. Intelligence has a physical substrate. It's called the mother loving brain. Okay. There's a biological machine in your head that if it's running correctly, if it's running optimally, is going to make you smarter. And the main idea here is that modern society is holding us back. It's suppressing our cognitive ability. And it's doing this through something called evolutionary mismatch. And basically that's when we're not living in alignment with the way that evolution has designed us to live because we're all biological machines designed to perform optimally in certain environments. And basically we're living outside of the optimal operational range of this biological machine in our heads. And as a result, we're not firing on all cylinders because modern society feeds us the wrong fuels and encourages the wrong behaviors. And it sets very powerful traps that are very, very hard to escape from. And I'm going to show you exactly what to do if you want to fix this problem. By the way, there's more than evolutionary mismatch. We'll get to that after. This is kind of like the main point of the video though. All right, here's a big one, nutrition. You want good nutrition. That's all I'm going to say about it. No, not really. Here's what I'm really going to say about it. <laughs> and, and this is a broad overview. We can't go in depth, but I encourage you to really research each and every one of these topics because any given one can really unlock a lot of potential, a lot of IQ points, if you will, or SAT points or whatever it is you're gunning for. So let's talk about the first one and that is omega threes. So if you're not getting sufficient omega threes, or if you're getting too many omega sixes, which are the uh, more inflammatory polyunsaturated fats, then those fats are gonna incorporate themselves into your cell membranes, including your neurons. It's gonna make your neurons less uh, movable and less able to fire quickly. So you wanna have more omega-3s so that those omega-3s actually make your neurons more supple and more, you know, fire more readily. Look into omega-3 consumption. Go deep on this topic. It's really, uh, really important. Next point, you wanna be sure that you're getting the building blocks of focus and attention. Basically, that's protein. You wanna get the amino acid tyrosine, which comes from protein and tryptophan, uh, because these amino acids break down into things like serotonin in the case of tryptophan and dopamine and norepinephrine in the case of tyrosine. So if you're getting sufficient proteins, your body will have the basic building blocks to give you focus and attention. Then yeah, you can supplement, but really best to get them from your normal lifestyle, from your everyday foods. And real quick, I want to share a story, guys. So it's story time. We're going to talk about my second time taking the SATs when I almost aced it. I just missed one question, what was different that day? A few things, I'm gonna get to all of them in the, over the course of this video, but one of them was the food that I was eating because my diet was kind of shite in high school, right? I would take a freaking bucket of ice cream to school. <laughs> like I would eat that and like bring a thing of OJ, a half finished carton of OJ to school. And that would be what I would eat during the day. But for my SATs, I remember that my dad and he would, you know, make me uh, good meals and so forth. But before the um, SATs, I specifically remember him making uh, salmon and vegetables and rice. And I had that the night before. And then the morning of the SATs, I had that for breakfast because we had leftovers. I remember I had this cold salmon steak. I liked eating it cold with the rice. And I remember just poking at this salmon thing and just thinking, wow, what a, what a healthy way to start the day. And I just felt great. And I was well fueled. My body had the building blocks for focus and for attention. And my blood sugar wasn't going all over the place. And, and so that's the next point I want to talk about. There's a lot more to talk about just with regards to nutrition, one of them is managing your blood sugar level, okay? And this ties in with a future point we're gonna talk about, which is 
avoiding the, you know, the modern distractions, which includes junk food. So you really want to get rid of junk food and processed food. Basically anything that comes in a package, there's a very high chance it's going to come with a lot of sugars and unhealthful fats that are going to wreak havoc on your, on your metabolism and on your body's ability to regulate its blood sugar level. So if your blood sugar level is shot, when you're taking a test, you're not going to be able to focus. You're not going to be able to use all your mental faculties towards solving that problem. So you really want to sort this problem out. You want to get rid of the sugar. Okay. Get rid of the sugar. And the sugar is not just sugar, but it's also things like bread. Okay. Any kind of freaking puff pastry or Twinkie or any sort of bread, really anything that comes from wheat is going to be very likely to affect your blood sugar level because the kind of starch in there, which is called amylopectin A, affects your blood sugar at a uh, very reliably and very consistently, also regardless almost of what kind of form it's in. So it could be whole grains. It could not be whole grains. It doesn't really matter when we're dealing with wheat. It's going to spike your blood sugar and lead to a sugar crash afterwards. So best to kind of get rid of those foods and stick to things that are going to kind of buffer that blood sugar response. You can look into ketosis as well. Again, a lot of topics out of the scope of this video, but get rid of the sugar, get rid of the processed foods. Okay, get rid of the breads, pastas, and whatnot. If you're really trying to use your brain at its optimum level. Okay, so next one is your gut health. This again is way beyond the scope, but your gut health is super important for the neurotransmitters in your brain. Okay, it affects your, your ability to use your brain. So you gotta get your gut right. And so look into what foods can uh, compromise your gut barrier, first of all. Look into how to repair that. Look into how you can cultivate a healthy gut through having things like kefir, potentially raw milk, kimchi, et cetera. Look at what's actually effective and what's not. Look into it, okay? This is your homework. And there's a lot more we could say about health, but in order to make this not a 17 hour video, I'm gonna leave it at that for now. But I will say that poor health it's gonna compromise your ability to use your brain more than almost anything. And one concept you can really think on is the fact that the body is the brain. Your brain can become inflamed. Your brain can run short of nutrients that are ingested by your body. Give the brain what it needs for its optimal functioning. Really make this a priority. And there's a lot of books you can read about this. I'll let you figure out what those are. You can ask me for suggestions if you want. I've read dozens and dozens and dozens of them because this was the driving force in my life for a good period of my life and still is to a large extent. But we'll leave it at that now for nutrition. To your homework, start eating better. Your brain is going to thank you for it. Your SAT scores or whatever scores are going to thank you for it. All right, so I forgot to mention the uh, kind of all-encompassing solution for this problem nutrition though, and that is called the, wait for it, Orignation diet. The Orignation diet. Okay, you never heard of it? Good. I didn't want to say paleo because that comes with all kinds of negative connotations and whatnot. But essentially we're talking about the paleo. The Orignations were like one culture in the Paleolithic era, but you really want to look at an insane can barely freaking talk. You want to look at an ancestral diet, something that's evolutionarily consistent. And there's some interpretation about what that is, but it's very clear what that does not include, right? Processed foods, abundant sugars, et cetera, et cetera. So look into it. There's plenty of resources out there. Okay, sleep. If you are not consistently sleeping, great. There's a lot of room for improvement and sleep could and probably is the number one thing you can improve if you want to improve your cognitive functioning, including your IQ scores or any kind of complex problem solving. So once again, let's rewind the clock back to high school. How did I score 1590 in the SATs? The day before that, I actually took it off. This was like a, you know, a Wednesday at high school, but I was like, you know what? No, I, I'm just gonna take the time off just because I felt like I needed some space. I needed to rest. I needed to focus for this. And that was very effective. And then the next day I slept very well too. You know, I wasn't busying myself with homework and stuff. I just said, stuff it, right? I'm going to focus on this test. And I did, and it helped immensely. That was probably the single best thing I did. So again, this is way out of the scope of this video, but you want to become a sleep expert. Read the Matt Walker book on sleep, Why We Sleep. Uh, check out all the Huberman Lab episodes on sleep. You really want to master this stuff. You really want to you know, treat it as if your life depended on it because it quite literally does. All right, guys, we're almost done with this thing, but stay on, watch the entire thing because some of the last points are absolute golden nugs of wisdom that you're gonna take with you to your grave, okay? <laughs> that sounds pretty morbid, but they're gonna stick with you for a long time if you actually implement them. And I really, really hope you do because it's gonna improve your life immeasurably. Okay, guys, so I want you to imagine you're waking up in the morning, you're walking around, you're doing your thing, and you're about to sit down for a test. Well, what have you forgotten to do? You might not feel any biological impulses to do this, but it's the fact that you're not doing it is probably impairing your attention, your concentration, you're just cognitive performance in general. What am I talking about? Well, when you wake up in the morning, you're slightly dehydrated. Even one to 2% a loss in your body weight can significantly impair your attention, your concentration, your ability to focus on something. This is real, okay? 
I don't drink coffee. I don't drink caffeine of any kind. But what I do do in the morning is I'll grab my mug. I'll put a little salt in. I'll just reach in the salt, grab a pinch, sprinkle it in, maybe grab another little pinch. Um, stir it up with a spoon and sip it down. And boy, does it kickstart things. It actually gives me a boost. It helps me attain my normal cognitive functioning a lot more quickly in the morning. And the salt is important because it helps the osmolarity of the water, helps you hydrate better. And also the minerals uh, from the salt, from the sea salt or Himalayan salt, whatever you're using, will help your neurons actually fire better. This is really important. You'll be able to feel the difference once you start doing this. The other thing you can do is actually add a little bit of potassium or take a uh, potassium tablet or take one of these uh, hydration mixes or whatever in the morning. I don't do that. I just do salt, but I, I, I do potassium as well, actually. And that it really helps. So I would say definitely try that out. Okay, guys, now I'm really going to blow your mind here. Are you ready for this? So imagine this. You have a big problem to solve. Maybe you're staring at a test and there's this one question that you just can't think of the answer to, or you are uh, making a computer program and you just, you can't really, uh, you, you know, there's a next answer that you need. And then all of a sudden you solve the problem. Well, who is doing the problem solving here? Are you responsible for the solution to that problem that you've come up with? Think about this. Was that due to your agency? Did, did you craft that answer? No, it came to you. If you really think, if you really get minute with this, and you think about the exact moment that the solution popped in your head, you'll realize that it wasn't really you who are responsible for it per se. It just kind of appeared in your mind. And you can read about, uh, you know, inventors and scientists saying the same thing over the ages, but you can exp you can realize that truth for yourself if you just think about it. If you just think about that, that very moment before the solution comes, you are technically responsible for the appearance of that, right? But what you are responsible for is laying the conditions for that solution to come to you in, right? So what I'm saying here is stillness. You gotta cultivate stillness and the ability to basically be receptive, you know, create a vessel that's that can receive these solutions because that's ultimately what creativity is. That's what problem solving is. And once again, we're gonna go back to high school, back to my second attempt at the SATs. What did I do? Well, I, I guess I already mentioned, I took the day off beforehand and I allowed stillness into my life because you know, I was a high school student. You know, you, you've got thoughts about all kinds of stuff going on. You've got homework, you've got this, you've got that. I said, no, we're gonna create some stillness here. I didn't put in those words. I just said, no, I'm playing hooky. I'm straight up staying at home. I'm gonna sleep in. I'm not gonna do anything that's gonna distract me. Well, actually, I think what I did was uh, practice tests. But in any case, I, I made room in my life for stillness. And a great way to cultivate stillness, which by the way, is not something I was doing in high school, uh, but that I've since done, and that's actually is the reason why I started this channel, is meditation, okay? And I know meditation sounds super boring um, if you're not already doing it. Um, maybe you don't think it's boring at all, and that's great because it's it's ultimately one of the best things you can do to cultivate stillness in your life, to cultivate a milieu for solutions to come to you, uh, to increase your problem solving, to increase your focus, to remove anxiety. <laughs> if you're trying to take a test, it goes beyond, way beyond what most people initially assume that meditation is for. But anyway, I'm gonna get off of that horse right now. Well, it turns out that even just a single session of meditation can help you increase your cognitive ability, your ability to uh, attend to, to whatever it is that you're paying attention to and your ability to react quickly to things. And of course, many other studies showing that dedicated practice over the course of weeks also has good effects on your ability to use your mother loving brain. Okay. And that's what we're talking about in this video. <laughs> all right, next, I love this topic. So in modern society, we are presented with all kinds of distractions. These are things that promise us pleasure up front, but they take from us on the back end. And this is basically every major industry. It's insane. Capitalism is conspiring to f us, right? And I love capitalism, actually. So it's got pluses and minuses. This is one of the big minuses. You know, if you look at fast food, if you, uh, sorry, I got to scratch my eye here. But if you look at fast food, if you look at social media, if you look at caffeine, marijuana, vaping, cigarettes, what else? Porn, obviously. I mean, a whole video on that subject, which goes way more in depth into the topic of dopamine management. So really check that out if you're interested in that. But there's all kinds of distractions in this world that promise upfront pleasure, but really they take from us a huge amount on the back end, even if most people don't realize that they're being taken from. What it's doing is it's making your pleasurable moments less pleasurable. It's increasing the hangovers from these experiences. And also if, you know, repeated engaging in these activities, especially the very high stimulus ones, are going to erode your baseline level of happiness and motivation over time. And that really impacts your cognitive performance in your day-to-day -day life. So one thing you can do to really increase your cognitive performance, increase your IQ scores, 
is to really manage your dopamine level. Issue distraction when it comes to those things. Say no, avoid these things that are gonna give you an unnatural upfront spike and, and take from you later. What do you wanna do instead? You wanna do hard things first. It's okay to pursue pleasure, right? <laughs> but it's better to do it indirectly. Do hard things first. It's like a reverse drug. It's great. You go for a workout, you do an ice bath or whatever. You're going to feel kind of like shite in the in the um, short term. But later, you're going to feel a greater amount of pleasure. You'll have more dopamine and be able to better solve problems afterwards versus taking the pleasure now, pain later approach. Don't do that. It's like borrowing money on a credit card. It's just going to cost you a lot more in the long run. Okay, guys, next topic. And we can go back to high school that day before I took my second test. And actually, this was in the weeks before that as well. What did I do? Well, I was preparing. I was practicing, okay? And if you look at it, they say like, oh, you can't really improve your IQ scores with practice. They really mean you cannot improve your G, which is this like general intelligence thing that IQ scores are kind of a measure of. But you can certainly improve your IQ scores because it's an imperfect measure of your, of your G and tests are something you can improve at. And so too is problem solving in general and basically whatever domain that you practice at. I practiced a, a shite load um, after I basically, you know, didn't do as well as I'd wanted the first time. I got one of the books that was like, you know, 10 practice SATs and I did all of them and I was very focused. And another example that might be more pertinent for you if you're not in high school, right, <laughs> is learning a new skill. Professionally, what I've done for the last like a lot of years is software development, but it did not come to me naturally. In fact, I had to learn my craft several times in a very pains, painstaking manner. I really had to bust my ass to learn a lot of things. Because when you're learning, you know, application development for the web, you learn HTML, CSS, web servers, Linux, you're going to learn the actual programming language that you're using, you're going to learn the framework, which is this kind of massive library of, of software tools, and all kinds of other things. You know, it's a massive undertaking when you're getting started. I just had to hammer my head against the wall, aka Google, googling every little question I had for months and months. And then again, another time, and then again, another time. And then eventually I got it. I remember at one point thinking like, oh, well, actually, there's nothing I can't make. I can make everything. And it was that moment that I realized like, wow, through effort and just dedication, you really can achieve a lot. Nonetheless, I got there and I was able to make some pretty cool things over my career as a software developer. In fact, stuff that was like way beyond what substantial uh, teams were trying to do with vast, vast sums of money. But uh, it's surprising what you can do with a little focus in practice, okay? Okay, guys, so I just outlined a bunch of different strategies and tactics you can use to increase your IQ scores, okay? Maybe not the, your general intelligence, which is kind of sits behind all that, but it will definitely make you more effective at test taking or solving complex problems of basically any type. Because right now, again, the hypothesis I lay out in this video is that we are holding ourselves back by living in these modern conditions. You wanna fix that evolutionary mismatch. Okay, we're back, battery change done. So yeah, the question I wanna answer now is, does this apply to everyone? Is everyone equally affected by modern society? Is everyone held down to the same extent? The answer is no. Some people are more robust, frankly. You know, they're able to perform optimally in a wider range of environments, including the modern environment. But I think for the vast majority of people, they can benefit substantially in terms of their health, their cognitive performance by fixing evolutionary mismatch. So you really, really wanna focus on this, even if you don't think you're affected by these things, just try them out. And I think you'll be very surprised by what you discover. Before we go, I wanna introduce this point, which I think is even more important than solving any particular problem, because there are a lot of tools out there that you can use to become more effective at whatever problem you're trying to solve. But one thing that a lot of people get wrong, including a lot of very, very, very smart people is, what problem are you trying to solve? You don't wanna waste your life chasing the wrong problems. If you wanna be successful, you gotta pick what problems you actually wanna solve that have meaning. You don't wanna spend your whole life barking up the wrong tree, solving the wrong problems. And finally, guys, there is a little known way to increase your performance and your well being almost instantly and with almost zero effort. And if you wanna find out what that is, watch this next video. It's really changed my life and I think it'll change yours as well. So thank you, like the video, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.